Last week on Night Crew. Something I think a lot of people probably don't realize about these goats and the way that we go about recording the sounds is that they're completely free range. Being able to let those coats free range, it sets the MFK library apart and it also gives us the ability to use sounds that we've never had before. As coyote hunters, we all have certain hunts we can reflect on from time to time just to bring back fun moments. For some, the only thing left may be fragments of the memories they created with good friends and maybe a few pictures to relive those good times. But the thing I love the most about what we do filming, when the music starts and the magic happens, we literally now have a time capsule of fun that can be enjoyed not just by the ones who are actually there, but the rest of the world as well. And this hunt with Fox Pro and MFK was shaping up to be one we all never want to forget. We had some snow on the ground, we set up, and we'd actually seen a coyote driving in not too far away, so we thought well, we're probably in a pretty good spot. Kick on Goody Woody Woodpecker again, and it's not but a second. And we have a coyote pop out, and he's coming straight to the call, and all of a sudden he holds up, starts looking behind him, and we're all thinking there's probably something else there. And about that time, this coyote takes off like he's been shot at. Sure enough, here comes a big dominant coyote rolling in, runs that coyote off, and then hard charges the call. I mean, he would have stuck his nose right in it. We were trying to stop him. I think we howled at him. Chris and John both trying to get this coyote stopped. I'm working on the remote, and this coyote ends up stopping about four feet from the call right on that blanket of snow, and John paints the ground after that. It was another stand that I will definitely uh, remember from this trip. There's blood right there, five steps from the call. Here's the X-24. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was wrong. It's seven steps. <laughs> no, you're right. Because oh, here's the right first. There, yeah. here's, the, here's his tracks right here. Good grief. See the blood here? He was about four steps so from the call. Yeah, yeah, about four steps from the call. Good grief. That's where he started pumping. And he made it another six or seven steps. He is a big old joker, too. Good. Well, I didn't realize how... I didn't realize how big he was. Oh, that big old coat. Shoot you, yeah, man. Paint the ground. Yes, sir. That was a cool Awesome. Man. It was. It was. That was awesome. We actually had three coyotes roll out of there, too. That first yearling coyote probably come out, and he heard these coyotes running through the woods. I'm sure on that stand, that submissive coyote that came in first probably thought he lost when he didn't get the bird that he thought he was coming to get. But in reality, that big dominant coyote saved his life. He lost the bird, but the big coyote lost his life. So at the end of that stand, that coyote that took off running, he won. Hey, good calling. Good shooting. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> Let's get another one. Laying the red carpet. <laughs>
Man, we had an unbelievable stand where we caught in, I don't know how many coyotes it was, five or six, but we had a game plan walking in. We were going down this growed up fence row and we were concentrating on this thicket and draw system. But once we got in there and saw how the wind was actually blowing, we kind of actually sit further away from the thicket than we actually wanted to initially. We got set up, got her call out there about 30 or 40 steps, went right in with her woodpecker distress again. Less than a minute, we had a coyote charging in. Then after that, it was pure chaos. It was pure chaos. Chris may go back at a later date and call up a bobtail cow because I think John may have bobbed on her, at least put a 90 in his tail. It may heal up a little crooked. That gets it a little crazy right off the bat. We had coyotes running left and right the whole time. Tori kept switching to several fights, food fights, adult coyote brawls. After they was out there in the open in front of us, they knew we were there. We had coyotes that would circle in behind us, get our wind, and would still pop back out wanting to get to the call. Here, hey y'all. I'm, I'm on the one on the left. Coyotes just kept rolling in, kept changing sounds, going back and forth to some of the fights, Pound Town, Fight Challenge, and these cows just keep rolling in. They're coming from every direction, even getting downwind of us, and it ends up working out and producing not only an action pack stand, but a triple. A triple and a tail. That's what you get for going downwind and not leaving. Those coyotes smelt us, they saw us, they knew we were there, but they were not about to leave. They could not get away from those MFK fight sounds. There was so many coyotes, I thought I'd give John some more incentive to hit another one. Give you a dollar if you can hit that one. I could win that dollar. <laughs> I want that dollar. <laughs> mystery of 2023, I think I've already missed more damn coyotes than I did all year last year. Hell far. <laughs> These coyotes were hearing something they'd never heard before, making them do things a coyote really shouldn't do. It was like a revolving door of coyotes. When one would leave, another one would come in and take his place. And they just kept coming. I even got to the point I quit trying to keep track of them all and just focused on the one that was in front of us. And that doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you know at that point you're experiencing a truly special stand. Hard to beat that. Just like Chris said, that's a good problem to have. We had coyotes running left and right. But they kept coming back, that was a mistake. Yeah, one of those epic stands. I think we actually called in at least five coyotes, maybe wow. six. Yeah, when you got so many coyotes rolling in, you can't keep up with how many yeah. you're calling. But these are the kind of stands you live for. The sweet sounds of Fox Pro and MFK were just more than they could take. Another old joker, and he is a monster. Look at this. Oh, it's a big old coyote. It's a, it a heavy. Texas coyote right there. Man, oh man. If you was deer hunting, that'd make a record book. That's right, Boone and Crockett. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Got another one right here. I was gonna put her hands on that and 
And I can see your third one. I don't even remember. I know that was the last one you shot. I don't remember which order you even shot. I think that big meal was the first one, I think. Female? Uh, yep. Boy, they in good shape, ain't they? Telling you what, we was rolling them in. That first scout come in on bird again. Been running yeah, bird been sounds, goody woody. Hey, it's been and a yellow hammered pecker. And then once they got in there and the shooting started, we just swapped back and forth between those fight sounds. What, three, di three different fight sounds? Pound town, table scraps, fight challenge. Power Ever of stand. MFK. Oh, it's doing it. And we still got one more together up. Let's see what we got up here. Right oh, there's number three. And a pretty bottom too. Another female. That's fun stuff. Hey, thanks for calling Kyle's in for us. Hey. It's easy when you hunt with Chris. He's, he's done put us in them. Chris, thanks for taking us, buddy. <laughs> Tori and John, y'all are both very welcome, but this trip is far from over. We still got cows to kill. We still got daylight. We had time for one more stand. Chris had the perfect setup. We got in there right at sunset. Again, Tori starts off with his woodpecker distress. We were tight on a thicket, and I was a little bit worried about a coyote rushing up on there too fast. Sure enough, within a minute again, a coyote emerges out of this thicket, coming to MFK woodpecker distress. I'm all over him if you can get on him. Do it if you can do it. On him. I'd say you snuck it through there. I had smoked his ass. We get that coyote knocked down. Tori decides to go right into his coyote vocals. He starts playing some coyote house. We immediately get answered back by a family group of coyotes off to our left. We shift to our left. He answers them back one more time with a group howl. Here comes coyotes rolling over the hill right down there where we was at. Looking back over the years, <laughs> it's almost embarrassing. I thought that I really had this deal figured out. I thought I knew all about coats. I'm on that front one right there. And after raising coats, learning about coats, recording coats, both from a research standpoint and from gathering audio and sound, I've learned that I knew very little about coats early on. I mean, my thought process, what I believe about coats has changed drastically over the year. I would say that the bulk of what I thought I knew about coats, big majority of that was wrong. And it's almost embarrassing to think back on the way that I thought that I was kind of a know-it-all on coats to what I know about them now. It was, it's an eye-opening deal to think back. We can relate him up right up on top of that other one. I would say that I've probably learned more in the first two years of raising coats than I have the entire time that I've hunted coats, and I've been doing that pretty much my entire life. Being able to take that knowledge and apply it to the hunting has definitely made me a lot more successful, and it's also allowed me to share a lot of this information, behavior, those moods, personalities, share that with other hunters and, uh, and make them more successful too. This little runt right here, his name is Fireball and he is a howling machine. That's probably one of the things that I get the most out of is after recording this audio and learning about the coyotes and you share it with other people and they have some success with it. Seeing other people's success is, you know, you, you just can't beat it. We set up on this stand. We were actually set, I think it was like a wheat field. We had a big thicket to our left, a growed up fence row. We were sitting in a little growed up fence row. I'm expecting coyotes to either come directly in front of us or to the left. One of the standout stands of the day had to be the coyote I referred to as the line coyote. We pull into this spot, sit down, there's a wide open field. Our cover's a fair piece away from us, and I'm thinking, you know, it may take a second here. No sooner than the call comes on. I mean, I haven't looked up from the remote yet, and John says, right here, right here, here comes one. I initially think it's a deer. I'm thinking, why is that deer coming toward this woodpecker distress? After about 10 seconds in, I notice it's a coyote. Look across the field, and here comes the line coyote. I see this stuff flopping around his neck and that made that coyote a stand out of the trip. This coyote comes from directly upwind, something they usually do not do, doesn't try to circle whatsoever, is just marching right to the X-24. Talk about a unique coyote. It was like he was wearing a bad toupee and every time he took a step, it flopped up and down on his back. I honestly couldn't tell what I was looking at either, John.
He was definitely a sight to behold, and we were all just like, what in the heck is going on here? Cow comes right up to the call. Of course, we're milking footage. Could have killed him way earlier in the stand, but he ends up right on top of the call. You know, I try to lip squeak him, get him to stop, because he's definitely close enough. He kind of veers off to the right on us. Figures out he's made a mistake, tries to get out there. But he wasn't going nowhere. We already had him. shot John. John makes a good shot on him, rolls him up, and we walk up to this thing. He doesn't have a tooth in his head hardly. It's probably a 10 plus year old coyote. When we got up to this coyote, man, he was in poor shape. This was an old joker. He didn't have hardly a tooth in his head, and the teeth that he did have, they didn't look very good. He actually had an abscess in his gums. One of the nastiest coyotes I've ever encountered. He was sure an old joker, and that's a testament to the sounds. He had to have heard every sound that Chris has been throwing out to him for 10 years. Well, John, that may be true, but on that day, at high noon, he finally punched his ticket. One thing I think really gets overlooked, because Tori's coyote vocals are so good, is some of his distress sounds. And we got to find out just why the MFK bird sounds did so well on this trip. I tell you what, Tori has kind of opened my eye to bird sounds. I've always kind of shied away from them. I've been a cottontail, distress type guy. We got here in Texas hunting with Chris. Tori starts out with all these woodpecker sounds, and there is coyotes just flowing out of the thickets left and right, and I was absolutely shocked. And one of the coolest things is, is just like we was talking about, with the coyote sounds. These sounds have been captured and recorded in a natural setting. Tori was telling the stories about when he would get snow down in Arkansas and it's kind of an odd thing for them to get snow and they would have it for days on end and it would almost make these birds, woodpeckers and other birds, almost lethargic. They would be on the ground. They wouldn't be flying much and these coyotes that Tori is recording would come in and actually catch these woodpeckers and other birds and they would just play with them just like a cat playing with a mouse and these birds would be making all kinds of sounds. Well here's Tori comes right there and records them just in a natural setting. Just like I was talking about before, nothing's forced. It's a coyote that's actually caught a bird and it's been recorded. And man, it has totally changed the way I look at bird distress sounds. They flat out work. Right there, right there. Yeah, it's right, right in front of us. See him, John? If you're wondering why John's not shooting this coyote, it's because I'm basically in the way. You want to get him, John? Go ahead. My camera lens was about two inches beside his barrel, so it was a little iffy. I'm good. I'm good. Can I kill him? I was fine with him taking that shot because I was leaning to get out of the way. But in the end, he did the right thing. You always got to stay safe. Unfortunately for him, by the time we actually got this coyote to come back out to coyote vocals, at that point, we'd had enough time to reposition if he tried to do the same thing on us. But this time, he wasn't so lucky. Hey guys. Hey. Great trip. Pleasure. Great trip, pleasure. man. I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> awesome trip. One we won't soon forget, that's for sure. Thanks for having us down, Chris. Man. Appreciate the invite. Anytime. You guys are always welcome. Hard to beat that. Huh? Hard to beat that. What's that? 18 coyotes? 18 coyotes and basically two days worth of hunting on film? Two, yep. two full days. You know, two afternoons and a full day. Tell you what, this has been an awesome hunt. Definitely one I won't soon forget. My first time hunting with Tori Cook. I've known Tori for a long time. It's our first time sharing some stands. First time sharing some stands with Chris. Man, I'll definitely be back. First time hunting this part of the state. You know, they call it the night crew, but 
Tell you what, this daytime calling stuff here is pretty awesome too. I'll definitely be back. After it was all said and done, we got to meet two great guys and experience a hunt that'll live on forever. And that's about all I could have ever asked. One heck of an experience. At the end of all of this, people have asked me what I'm most proud of with MFK. And there was a few years back, I probably would have answered this question different because I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about, you know, what am I most proud of because I'm always trying to, to get better and do more stuff. I guess what I'm most proud of is I've had so much help. I didn't have the, the back and financially and stuff like that early on, but the people that were close to me, my parents, my mom, dad, my wife, some of my close friends, where this has gone, where MFK's made it to, the partnership with Fox Pro, I think what I'm most proud of is that I think those people that helped me get here would be proud of me and, and where it's gotten to. That's what I'm most proud of. It's not necessarily the success, it's those people being proud of seeing you know, all of this come together and knowing that even though they're behind the scenes, they were a big part of that from day one. My mom and dad giving me every opportunity to pursue these things and then a progression through with some of the buddies that helped me get this off the ground when I didn't have the money to do it. And now my wife, who is probably growing this from behind the scenes more than I do. I mean, she's as passionate about it and a lot of the times that stuff gets left out. And so I wanna make sure that, that I give back to the people that uh, gave to me. 18 coyotes in only two days are no longer with us. But if they could talk, I'm sure they'd be telling all their buddies, y'all look out. Cause those sounds truly are made for one thing and one thing only.